Hey guys, EST here with another great gear review, and of course not sponsored in any way. In fact, a lot of these products are unbranded, you know the ammo on this channel at this point. I just went to eBay, hit sort lowest first, and bought the first thing that looked vaguely respectable. And occasionally what I order actually shows up. So uh, in part one of this video, we're testing the first two that you can see on the screen there. We got a real small one and uh, a lot bigger one. So hey, if I could charge a phone, a GPS device, a flashlight, um, an electric plasma arc lighter to start fires for under 20 bucks when I've seen a lot of those uh, battery bank solutions that are up in the like 80 plus dollar range. Well, I bought some decent diagnostic equipment and we're going to see what these actually do. All right, we're outside on a pretty sunny day, uh, four o'clock, uh, kind of clouds going in and out, which is a good way to test it. We've got the one watt panel, fresh out of the envelope, fresh out of my mailbox. Uh, it's got the waterproof uh, voltage regulation circuit, and then it drops just to a standard little uh, USB socket. And it's about 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, so what is that, like four inches by four inches? But it is only rated for one watt, and the typical modern phone charger is at least 10. However, this module is actually made specifically to go in solar lights. So let's hook it up and see what it does. So that right there is just a simple little uh, USB inline current and voltage measuring device. It's going to be kind of hard to see in the sun, uh, even actually from my eyes visually because it was so sunny out. But let's see if this gets anywhere close to what it's rated. So this right here is a big battery bank, uh, previously seen on my channel over 20,000 milliamp hours. You kind of build it yourself because the ships without the battery is pretty cool. And it's at 74% so there's a little bit of charging that we could do. And obviously the little digital readouts on both devices don't look right in a camera. But in real life, they fool the human eye and actually look like numbers. But I'll just let you know what the readouts actually said. I took notes. So I messed around with it quite a bit, but uh, you might be able to see 4.06, 4.05, 4.07 ,04 volts, and 0, 0.00 amps. What is going on there? I'm trying to verify it by, like, you know, putting it in the dark and getting out of the sunlight. And well, in follow-up testing, even the next day at noon, um... Still was reading 0.00, .00 amps, so one of two things is going on here. It has some kind of weird minimum threshold where it won't read, you know, some fraction of an amp. Or, even though the power bank is showing as charging, it doesn't like the 4 volts because USB runs at 5 volts. So it might be like, well, something is happening, but I'm, I'm not able to actually draw current. So even in other days, max sunlight tilted directly at the sun at noon... I still wasn't able to pick up even like 1% on the battery bank, but um, on a phone and on an electric lighter, it seemed to charge it a little bit. Awfully hard to verify without a uh, current reading, though. So the only thing this has going for it is the $9.06 plus free shipping price, which, okay. And the size, the weight, the portability, it's pretty stiff, it's pretty durable, um, you know, plastic enamel coating. It's waterproof, it's pretty tough, but uh, I think you just gotta go bigger. Now, I think there was like a 2 or 3 watt version of this that I didn't buy because, well, spoiler alert, the next one is 6 watts, so let's jump into that. So this is about 10.2 inches, you know, about the size of my hand by about 5 inches. That is the waterproof uh, USB voltage regulation circuit there. And we've got little corners for mounting with, uh, they came with some carabiners and some suction cups, so uh, that's kind of cool actually. So pretty nice design, pretty nice features, but, well, let's read the specs. So let's see, the title said 6 watts, 5 volts. Um, the specs said max power 10 watts with a VOC, I'm not actually sure what that is, 6.8, I think voltage over current protection. The USB regulator output is uh, 1.2 amps at 5 volts, so uh, yeah, that is exactly 6 watts. They have a, a second spec that says that the output is 1700 milliamp hours which is not a unit of output power. They say it's a monocrystalline solar cell with efficiency up to 24%. That is extremely unlikely. Uh, it's an epoxy resin surface, which uh, I, I don't think is true. Then they say it's laminated. I do think that's true. And it's IP65 waterproof. Um, it might be. It is only six millimeters thick. And let me say that material is kind of similar to like a cutting board like it, it's really tough you would almost have to kick this to snap it in half so pretty impressive overall design and you can't just like crush or snap the solar panels there's no glass there's no you know acrylic none of that it almost looks painted on and actually i think the way i understand it it might be they do warn that if you were to scratch it you're gonna have a problem and yeah my understanding of solar cells is you get one good scratch across just one of those lines you're gonna have a big problem so I wish it had a little better coating, but I mean, you just wrap this in like a towel or like put it in a basic hard case or something or, you know, just whatever. Uh, it can flex a little bit and it's not going to get damaged by like impacts or, you know, that kind of thing. But you really got to protect the surface. So uh, this model goes for just under 19 bucks, all shipping and tax included. I found this from multiple sellers. It shouldn't be that hard to find it. So six times the output power for only about double the size. I'm skeptical. Let's plug it in and see what happens. 
got the little measuring device and you can see it goes uh, into that little uh, circuit with no like offboard cable. Um, so you got to kind of bring your own cable, but if I wasn't using the measuring device, it'd be fine. Now I realize now that the only way to read it is to face it away from the sun, which um, it's actually getting pretty good voltage for the for the like refracted uh, sunlight there. And uh, after failing to find even like a little one foot extension for just a standard USB to USB, I put it through a four port hub that is complete garbage. And it was invented before 10 watt USB was, so um, take that with a grain of salt. Now, like I said, there was some clouds, a little bit of haze the day that I filmed this. And at this point, it was about 4.30, so not the ideal time for peak solar. But still, it was kind of all over the place, but it was getting about 5 volts and about upwards of like 0.4 amps. So that's only 2 watts. Uh, angling it really, really well, uh, I did this off camera later, was about 3 watts. So, I mean, that's three times as powerful as the other one. This is a little harder to carry around and, you know, put it in your glove box, put it in your backpack, but it's, you know, 10.2 inches. But hey, measurable amps coming through the cable. I'll take it. So I ended up retesting this one the next day. Once again, noontime, full sunlight, and it was a bit steadier. Um, I angled it directly at the sun, just kind of held it up in the air and read it. And I was getting between four and five watts. So that's pretty good. And then as an added test, um, I threw my actual phone in my glove box in the car and then put this just on the dash while I parked and went, you know, grocery shopping. And after about 50 minutes, it charged it 20% from 50% to about 70. Now a full blown, you know, fast charging, like one amp, 12 volt, which is the new uh, fast charging standard that my phone uses. So 12 watts, uh, 12 watt charge at the wall would have probably put it from 50% to full, but just barely in about an hour. So we got a little less than half that. That's not bad. I mean, that's probably an average of four and a half to five watts. That's pretty darn good. So no thick enamel coating. Uh, it's long enough that you could maybe snap it or damage it. And surface scratches are a thing, but with just basic care, this is the one right here. And then you get the suction cups, the carabiners, where you can just put it in a window and then leave your phone or your battery device or whatever not sitting out in the sunlight or the heat. And yeah, leaving a black battery bank sitting out in the sun. I mean, I'd at least want it in the shade, preferably in like a building or like a climate controlled area. But if you have air conditioning working, you probably have power. So it is what it is. But um, yeah, in the car, I at least you know, put it in the glove box and then uh, crack the windows. So overall, very, very impressive. Remember, this was just under $19. Still is at the time of recording. I double-checked. So if you can find uh, anyone that looks just like this, I'd recommend it. Obviously, you have to buy your own cables on top of it, and don't buy cheap garbage cables. Those cheap little dollar store cables, man, those things, especially the Type Cs. I have a lot of Type Cs that are only like two feet long, but they will not carry above about three or four watts. They don't support fast charging. Uh, they're just awful. So the same seller, so in theory the same manufacturer, made a like thick enamel epoxy coated but slightly larger 1.5 watt, but I just wouldn't even mess with 1.5 watts. Just some quick like back of the napkin math. Plus some real world testing on similar devices and some of my own solar equipment. Yeah, 1.5 watts is going to take like 10, 20, 30 hours to charge a phone, depending upon conditions. That's like three days. I would not mess with anything below about 5 watts. So 15 years ago, smartphones would charge at 5 volt USB 1 amp max. Usually a micro B tip and that was that. Then a lot of intermediary models, uh, 5, 6 years ago-ish. So a bit before USB-C got widely established. A lot of phones would do 2 to 2.1 amp charging at 5 volts. So you multiply and you get about 10 watts, 10 watt charging. Now that Type-C is out and you know you can get up to 240 watts across Type-C, you can charge laptops on them now. In fact, my laptop uses a 90 watt Type-C connector. The standards are all over the place and then you hear about this thing called fast charge. It's only available on USB 3.0 ports that are newer, so on like a standard desktop that would be the blue ones. And they're usually like a full size standard tip that you're used to seeing with USB, it's called a Type-A head. But some of them now are even just C to C because why not? And uh, those onward can support something called fast charging, but there is really no direct standard for fast charging. I kept saying 12 volt because it'll step it up from five volt to 12 volt if it senses it's compatible because that's what Samsung tends to do. But that's subject to change. Every phone model is different and you know, LG and all the other phone manufacturers do it differently, potentially. So I'm pretty sure I've seen mine at 12 volts and just over one amp. So it's about, you know, 12 to maybe 15 watt charging. 
But, well, it's pretty hard for a, a solar panel to know or be capable of stepping up to 12 volts. So if I wanted full speed charging on my phone through a solar panel, first of all, it would probably have to be rated for 20 watts. And secondly, I'm just not going to find one that's like Samsung specific or just happens to work with my exact version of fast charging. So the best I can say is use the highest spec cable that's capable of carrying the most power and just don't even bother with a panel above really about like 10 watts. Because there's just no point because it, it wouldn't even know or be capable of stepping up to 12 volts. So that's your little like charging modern mobile devices 101 at the end here. Figured I'd throw that in so you know what's going on because this is going to apply more and more as the years go on. But especially to most people who bought a phone in the last two years. So even if you've got, oh here we go, OnePlus Dash, Warp Charge, Motorola Rapid Charging, Turbo Power, MediaTek, Pump Express, Apple's Lightning 4.0 something 18 watt, whatever they call it. All different standards, all different fast charging, all different voltages. At the end of the day, every single device I have ever seen will just resort to, okay, I can take two amps over five volts, which is 10 watts. That's like the backup plan in case it can't fast charge. So like I said, this is part one of the video. Part two will be coming out uh, in the near future. And this one's going to go to a weird place. You know what channel you're on. We're going to rip the solar panel off of a random garden light from my garden. And without knowing any of the specs, hook it up to allegedly a universal. It's like three volt to 24 volt. Just send it in and we'll fix it. A USB voltage regulation circuit that cost me like a dollar 80. And then I bought a little sample uh, wind turbine. It's supposed to be for science experiments, but uh, hey. And then I got my hands on a motorcycle alternator with completely unknown specs. It was an Amazon return at a random, you know, Amazon return warehouse store. And we're going to see if I can get that spinning with something. I don't know. Might be a bicycle tire. Might be a wind turbine. I don't know. Where we're going to go with that one, I don't know. But what I can tell you is it's almost definitely going to light that little USB circuit on fire. Also in that one, I'm going to show you how to charge your phone off of AA batteries. Oh, yes. I think a lot of people will find that one interesting. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that in the future. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked all the research and effort and, uh, of course, budget that went into this very, very obviously expensive inventory that I'm definitely writing off of my taxes. But hey, check out the rest of my videos. We've got a lot of cool gear reviews, and I'll see you guys next time.